time to After the Arc, the official after show for The Arc. I am Yel Teagle. And I am Adrian Snow. I am so excited. This is the official after show, and we are going to be taking our fans, our viewers, everyone who's loving The Arc behind the scenes. Yes. We are going to take you to set. We're going to talk to the cast. Yes. We're going to talk to writers and creators <laughs> of this show. We are going to show you all the little secrets of how The Arc is made. But first, let's discuss this first episode. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about the premiere of the arc. Uh, I think it's a, a great start to a show. You know, I'm all for like uh, <laughs> chaos on a ship in space. Oh, that's my jam. And so, just to kind of get introduced to the characters, like get an overall feel for like what the storylines are going to be, was really good. How about you? Um, I uh, I was stressed. I was so stressed. No. <laughs> it's it's chaos, right? We're waking yeah. up. We don't know what happened. We yeah. don't know what's going on. We don't know who's alive, who's dead. It's chaos, and that is very stressful for me. Yeah, I feel you. You don't think you could handle that? Just like you know, just be on a boat in, in space. And no, like, you can't come through with that. Absolutely okay. not. <laughs> no, I need to be eased into things. Um, I mean, we find out all the higher ups are dead. Yep. Uh, that's like my my worst nightmare. That there's no one in in control of the ship. That there's no one in charge. <laughs> well, they they like have a people who understand what they're doing. They're just not like the top tier. But they're all still like scientists. They're all still like marine or in the military. So I think they'll be okay. Hopefully. Yeah, you have so much more. But I was stressing out. Oh no, I was like, this. I guess I'm kind of like just like this is like old school sci-fi for me. So I'm like, okay, they'll be okay. <laughs> they're gonna figure this out. I need to be introduced to everybody. Oh uh, yeah. So we might as well introduce everybody. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. Um, let's start with Garnett. Yes. She has taken charge. She is our HBIC. She is <laughs> killing yes. it. How did you feel about this character? As a character, I'm not quite sure where I stand with her. Um, I think with the other two lieutenants, you kind of have a, like a, oh, okay, these are what these people are bringing in. But it's a hard position to have. It's like when you are the person in charge of the ship, it it's tough to be anything but like stoic and strong. And so I'm, I'm like more interested to see like the various sides of her. Yeah. Ooh, that's a really good point. Um, I like that she stepped up. Mm -hmm. I like that she took charge. Yep. Um, I, again, as someone who would wake up in this chaos and be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> would you just be in the corner crying? With, like, you yes. Just... <laughs> yes. Do you doubt that? No. You gotta... If I were on this ship, I'd be grateful that someone else has know, like, done that's... the work. Someone wants to do it. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to do it. I'd no. be like, eh, you know. <laughs> Everything will be okay. We'll get some water. We'll get some food eventually, right? So, eventually. Eventually. Oh. Um, but she has to compete with the other two lieutenants, right? Yeah. We have Lane, who wants to be in charge. Yes. Um, this character feels um, not devious, but there's something else going on. He's well, He feels very, like, British. I guess it's because he is. <laughs> like, and, you know, <laughs> can we trust them? And yeah. so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um. I I agree. There is a little. I was like, is this the vil? Is he our villain? I know. He because he's just kind of you know immediately like on guard. And so why is he that way? And are we going to get an understanding of why he is that way? Um. Let's talk about Bryce and what his deal is. Just to be a hot Scotsman is what I thought. That's what we were. That's what he was there for. Isn't I mean, that's what I. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry. That, we're watching the same show. Right, he's, he's just muscles and and Scottishness. Right. Right? No, I'm joking. <laughs> like he's, I, he's fun and smart. I look forward to seeing what he brings to the table, <laughs> more so than what we've seen him bring to the table so far. I also feel like we should kind of touch on the fact that, like, all the people who are actually in leadership are dead. Right. And so these are people who are, are being thrust into positions they would normally be in. And the kind of pressure that puts on people to work together when... Like the people who should be telling them what to do are gone. They are stepping up to do what they need to. Um, like Alicia, who is, I think, one of my favorite characters. She's super cute. She's super sweet. She's real annoying right now, but she's super cute <laughs> and she's super sweet. And and you know, I do think she kind of is compensating for the fact that she is like also ridiculously brilliant. Which is always nice to see. It's always nice to see like a young woman of color also be like, and I'm the smartest person in the room. And so just to have that in the characters, really, I really appreciate that. Um, she does talk a lot. She talks real fast. I'm on the waste management team. 
I, I know, gross, but it's not like it didn't apply to every other branch on the ship first. But hey, it got me on the ship. And my family are actually really supportive. But why wouldn't they be, right? If we actually succeed in building a sustainable colony, all our families get to be the first to come and settle there. Uh, <laughs> um, who are you? Because it's just like that kind of youthful energy where you're like, I cannot do this all the time. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, she's amazing. Yeah. It's like, All right. Like, um, wanna, wanna... <laughs> Angus? Angus. Oh, gosh. He's like so cute. He's just an adorable little, like, gardener. <laughs> At least that's the feeling I get off of, is that that's going to be kind of, like, his job, is that he's also young and brilliant, but he's also going to be able to help maybe develop uh, food for the entire ship, which is amazing. Right. I honestly was like, this character is, he's a little mousy. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's going to be, like, this obnoxious little mouse. But he has super soil. He He's yeah. a rule breaker. He, he brought the super soil He brought the that ship. super soil. I'm... It, it's a smart, I mean, it's a, a good thing, even though he was breaking the rules. Right. I, I also feel like anytime you place, like, super in front of anything, it could go really wrong. It mm. could be a swamp thing. It could be not. It I really be, want that now. You know, we got to get that swamp thing going. The first thing I did think, though, when he said I have super soil was, but they don't have any water. Mm. And I was like, does it, can it grow without water? Right. So, yeah. Uh, and we lose that drop in the shower. Yes, that one drop. You can't leave your faucet leaking because that's right. going to be a whole issue. Like, <laughs> this is like like growing up 101. Don't leave your faucet leaking. But uh, yeah. Let's talk about that shower scene. We, we meet Kat. We do. Kat is the character that I personally most relate to. Really? Um, in that everyone on this ship has an expertise or a skill level. Yeah. And Kat does not. Yeah, she doesn't seem to. She She's there because of popularity because of she's attractive yeah and i guess what i'm saying is no, that's no, why you no, think no. you would be there no. <laughs> i'm just saying that i don't have a skill set that would be helpful on a spaceship i oh i feel like everyone there has a skill set i just don't think we've seen hers yet oh. um and strickland who is our head of security yes he's scary you think Strickland's scary yeah so he, when she's breaking the rules in the shower and, and then he yells at her <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like it, like those scenes can go a lot of different ways. I felt like he was very reserved and, and professional. We also have Ava and Harris and this tragic romance. Yes. Yeah. It's... I always like to know people like more in, in like the kind of like losing the, you know, losing a partner in a relationship. So I, I wish we had kind of gotten more of Harris like in episode two. But it it I think it's a good jump off point for Ava so that she can kind of, I don't know, potentially grow from that or, you know, because I don't know if she's going to blame herself either because she didn't fill up the oxygen in those particular suits at the time. Mm. And I'm fascinated to know more about what this rule was about... Why they couldn't be public. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird rule to have because you would assume that people would get involved with each other if they're on a colony on a foreign planet. Right. That would be my assumption as well. Yeah. Um, and then we, we have our imposter, Jasper. Yes. Oh, Jasper. Um, this character, I feel I feel like was so rude and such a jerk. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, I don't mind that he's dead. Threatening people as a way of saving your life in, in the <laughs> void of space is not a smart idea. <laughs> like, I just don't I wouldn't threaten anyone. I guess, you know, if, if it were me and I was on a spaceship, I'd be the nicest person there because I just want to survive and get to this new planet like right. as much as I possibly can there's no point in me I, so I would not be an interesting character in a sci-fi <laughs> show I'm realizing because I'm like well guys let's just get along <laughs> like, let's just make it uh, but for for him especially when you're in the wrong from jump then maybe you shouldn't be rocking the boat mm. I I agree I think yeah. it's so weird to to be so mean and yeah. and then like Threaten people. Threaten, like... Speaking of, what... Okay, at the end of this episode, we are left with so many questions. Yes. We don't know what happened. No. We don't know what we're going to do. It, we're, we're just... We're up in the air. <laughs> as you know, as anyone who's seen me talk about TV show, I'm a shipper. Okay. I am full of ships. Okay. <laughs> Already? <laughs> oh! The moment that Bryce learns about Alicia's four masters... Mm-hmm. 
that was the moment. You were like, I, I want this to happen. I want Alicia and Bryce. Hmm. Okay. I think that the the funny, handsome a male model and the smart girl. Yes. Should always be together. Should always this be together. This is life. Uh, so this episode was pretty, pretty crazy. So like, what are your top three moments or top three wow moments of episode one? I think uh, the biggest wow moment, I'm going to do it backwards, okay. is the, the reveal at the end that Jasper, who is, I think the whole Jasper thing in, in and of itself is a wow moment, right? Yeah. He's not Jasper and now yep. he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's a pretty big moment. It's a pretty big moment. I would say like, uh, for me, probably <laughs> the ship. Like, half the ship being taken off. Sure. And, like, floating off into space and, like, half the crew is dead. And then I'd probably say, like, the biosphere. Like, the possibility of, like, uh, plants in space. I don't know. I find that really appealing and wow-ish. I, I totally agree. Yeah. I think uh, I think Angus hiding the super soil. Yes. That's a wow, a wow moment. moment. Absolutely. And then Harris dying is also, I'd probably say, a wow moment. Because it's just, like, you don't expect, like, certain characters to die. Like, right off the bat. So Jasper and Harris, exactly, yeah. Yeah, Harris's death is definitely, I would say, more of a wow moment. Oh, wow. Than, yeah, and then oh. like a wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, how about I'm that? sad. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, those are the big moments of this first episode. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's still so much more that we are going to show you yeah. about the first episode of The Ark. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Should I, I do that? Should I mimic you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally living my newsroom like fantasy right now. <laughs> Live on. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> We're on the air. <laughs> this is After the Arc, and I'm sitting with Christy Burke. Hello. That's me. That is you. <laughs> um, let's jump into this first episode of The Arc. Okay. Very serious. Very serious. Um, because your character, Garnett, has this beautiful speech, this like big empowering speech oh, yeah. where she takes charge. And I would love to know what that was like for you, how that felt. How early was that in production? Oh, look, that was three days. <laughs> that was like three days in. They were like, you're doing the speech. I think what was really cool about that speech is... So for the audition, I did the whole speech, but in the sides, it, they had cut it, like cut it down to like only like the first paragraph, but it's really like almost a page and a half. And I read it and I remember just being like, this is an incredible speech and the payoff is the end. And I would be so upset not to like get to do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so my little neurotic overworking workaholic brain was like we're gonna do the whole speech and so I did the whole speech for the audition thank goodness because then when it came time to like do it for real I really felt like I knew it because I had done it probably like a thousand times um yeah and we did that I think that was like the third day of shooting the show this ship had amazing leadership and they were brought together to nurture us into becoming the colony's future they're all gone now we don't have the luxury of time. Each and every one of you was chosen. I couldn't stop crying. Like I was so jet lagged and I couldn't stop crying. And I was like trying to do the speech and Dean was like, get it together. <laughs> and I was like, but everyone's so beautiful and I'm so inspired by these people. I like, I literally was like, get it together, girl. But it is such a beautiful speech and really empowering. How many times did you have to do it? Oh, like s 10 hours. I felt like I was doing that speech all day. Like it really was something that I was like, I, even for other people's coverage, like I, we kept doing the speech, um, which I, fit, I feel was like, in, it was just crazy. But if you asked me to like repeat it today, I don't think I could. <laughs> Well, that's what we were going to do. Great. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never. <laughs> I don't even know how it starts. Like, I literally feel like I forgot it. Like, it, the next day I was like, thank goodness that's over. <laughs> um, it really is the scene where we, like, have the whole crew, everyone who's still alive mm -hmm. is there. Yeah. Um, and... Super intimidating, like, doing something like that in this huge room with all these actors who are amazing staring at me and these extras staring at me and, like the crew staring at me it was like just me then delivering this like crazy speech in front of all these people it really felt like exactly what you see you know yeah um what did it look like from your perspective like what are you looking at 
Are you looking at all these eyeballs just staring at you? Or is everyone yes. like lost? And I was like really like trying to inspire everybody. And, you know, Dean used Obama and like all these different leaders as like um, examples of how he wanted Garnett to give speeches. And so I was like, I'm never going to be Obama. Like he's amazing. <laughs> like what a, what a, like no worries. What a reference. Um, but yeah, I was just staring at eyeballs and hoping that like, things were landing on them and but then when I'm staring at these eyeballs and they're like you know looking sad and then I'm getting sad because I'm like don't be sad <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah but it, everyone was like in the scene with me so it felt I felt really supported um it, that's amazing because it really is the first time that you know Garnett steps into leadership mm -hmm. is this you know day three do you feel like you're like okay I am leading this group it felt like it was the scene that I was like how do I how do I put this it felt like the the scene that I was like this is what this is what we all need to bring like I was really kind of like you know putting I don't know how to put this into words like um like I was saying like I didn't mess up a single line. So it was kind of like one of those things where I was like, okay, guys, if I can do it, you can do it. Like, I hope moving forward, this is like what what we all bring to the table kind of thing. It felt like I was kind of showing by example, like, this is what we need to be like on set. And maybe I did that. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> I mean, that's really beautiful. Yeah, I felt like I was giving. I also oh, I just hit this table. Um, I also felt like I was giving that speech to myself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was also kind of crazy, too, because what I'm saying is also kind of what these actors needed to hear, which is, you know, we do have a lot of like young, young beginning actors on our show. And I really felt like I was like, listen, like you booked this part for a reason. You're on this ship for a reason. Like I really felt like I didn't have to act that much because I was really saying it to them as, you know, actors. Yeah, it's a speech that can be applied to any field. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, I should really re-memorize that speech and just give it to people. <laughs> should be your morning affirmations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are the best at this yeah. role, and that's yeah. why we're here. <laughs> to save mankind. To <laughs> save our families back home. That's the only part I remember, because I was like, that is so important. Don't mess that up. <laughs> um, are, you a, are you a public speaker? Do you feel comfortable giving speeches? Okay, so... People think I'm like a speech person and during filming I was constantly like giving speeches at cast dinners and I was like, guys, I'm not, I don't give speeches in my life. I'm actually extremely shy, um, which I know some people find is really wild. I'm quite extremely introverted and so... Yeah, I don't give, I don't go around being like, let me give you my Shakespearean <laughs> speech. Um, nor do I ever assume anyone like wants to hear my speech, you know? So, no, I don't. And it was, I think that's the, that was the most intimidating thing when I first signed on to this project. I was like, the speeches and the announcements mm. and the things that I'm going to have to say and like, how do I do that with conviction and, and, um, and like feminine power, you know, um, and what is feminine power and where does that sit on me and who am I to be doing this thing? But um, yeah, no, I think to answer your question, if that whole <laughs> long segue even does answer your question. Yes. No, I don't give speeches and it scares me. Um, well, this speech also is the, the moment where we're seeing her take charge mm. next to Bryson Lane. Yeah. Um, and their reactions to that. Yeah, always. They're like, <laughs> they're so comical, those two. And, they're, and their characters are so, you know, such foils of each other. And, you know, they complement each other very well. You have, you know, Bryce, who's this like witty, carefree Scott. And then you have um, Lane, who's this like... He cares very deeply, but he's extremely misunderstood and very brash and like direct. And it's so it's so interesting. I think they they did a really good job at casting. No, I'm just kidding. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> and they are their characters. No, they're the best. I was about to be like, which of these three do you feel that you're most like? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess my character, I think now especially after going through you know this filming process of the show I, I definitely feel like her or at least like to think I do there's a piece of her and that whole journey that I really 
hold dear to my heart. The Ark is a brand new series and anything could happen. Let's sit down with the creator, Dean Devlin. My name is Dean Devlin. I am the uh, creator and executive producer of The Ark. I also directed the first episode. Uh, most people know me from the TV shows uh, Leverage, Librarians, The Outpost, Almost Paradise. Although I would say probably the most uh, uh, famous thing I've ever done was uh, I wrote and produced the, the movie Independence Day. The first movie I ever produced, I also co-wrote uh, called Stargate. And later, John Glasner turned that into a TV series that lasted many, many years and had many spin-offs. And we first paired up together to do uh, a TV series called The Outpost. But the first time we've ever paired up to do science fiction is The Ark. So we're really hoping that all the Stargate fans will come and check us out. So The Ark is not unlike the world we live in. It is a contained space dealing with a worldwide crisis, the world of their spaceship. And the thing that's preventing them from overcoming it is their differences. And this is a show really about the human dilemma. Uh, so while it has all the fun bells and whistles of a good sci-fi show, it, it, it's really more about the characters and what they're going through. You know, it's really exciting to try and create a whole new world, you know, a future with a different history, with different science, um, and try to project, you know, what, what could that world be like? And we've found the most amazing artists, both conceptual artists and digital effects artists and costume designers and production designers and prop makers to help create this world. And it's really fun and exciting to get to be part of that. So how is it creating this whole new mythology and universe? You know, because it's, again, this is from your mind. That's the fun part. You know, I mean, I think the thing is, you know, when I was a little boy, my mother was did a guest star on the original Star Trek. And in the, in the 60s, Star Trek was really a metaphor for everything that was going on. And much like today, when you had people who couldn't talk about issues, Star Trek gave them a platform to have a conversation. You know, if people couldn't have a, a, a civil conversation about race relationship or, or the Vietnam War, they could debate a Star Trek episode, mm -hmm. you know, and they could find common ground. And so the fun of creating a science fiction like this is to be able to look at the things we're dealing with and saying, how can we put this in another way so it doesn't trigger everybody and push their buttons and give us a, 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 a format to look at some issues and talk about it intelligently? Yeah. Um, and you have to, you know, every... Every space show has their very specific spaceship. Um, tell me about creating this spaceship that stands apart, that is, this is the Ark ship. That was a lot of work. And um, actually, my production designer from both Librarians and Leverage, Randall Grove, uh, he came in and consulted on all of this in the very, very beginning. Of course, he had to leave quickly and go do Leverage Redemption. But uh, uh, he came in there and he worked with everybody. And we tried to come up with a consistent look of what do these things look like. They had to have been built very quickly, but they were probably built independently of the government, you know, more like SpaceX. You know, so our thought was there is this this uh, uh, billionaire who ran his own space company, as 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 uh, billionaires tend to do. Um, and... Uh, 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 you know, so what would it look like? What, how would it have been made? And and that became a big part of the design of trying to keep it consistent. I love that. Um, let's talk about season one. What are you excited for fans to see in season one? Well, I, I think the thing about it is it it's a space show. I mean, it, it it is, but it's not a laser gun alien show. It's really a human drama in space and uh, there, there, it deals with a lot of issues about space travel, it de deals with science fiction tropes, but it's really a human drama. It's really about what happens with a group of people who are s confined to the space. They can't, get, they can't leave the space and they're dealing with uh, a, an enormous crisis. And will everybody pull together and all row in the same direction or like we've seen in recent uh, uh, crises, do we splinter off? And then how do we deal with those splinters? So it's, you know, I'm, I'm excited for people to see the twists and turns of the characters and to see uh, uh, how this evolves, how, how their ability to deal with a crisis evolves. Yeah, the arc has a ton of characters. Um, 
and I think that everyone's going to find different things that they relate to in each of them. Is there a character that you relate to the most or that you find yourself most drawn to? Oh, I love all my children. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, the thing is, on a normal show, you can have guest stars. But that's almost impossible on this show because no one else can come on board the ship, right? You know, they're all on the ship. So we had to have a really large cast. And again, this is, uh, I, I tried to bring as many people as I could in, into the pilot, but Jonathan Glasner then added more. And we really had this nice ensemble of a lot of different characters who all talk differently than the, each other. They all have different points of view. They all have different attitudes. Um, this show also, you shot the whole thing in Serbia. Yeah. Um, tell me about shooting in Serbia. Why Serbia? Well, we we had done The Outpost in Serbia. And season one of Outpost, we had done in Utah. And for the same amount of money in Serbia, we got a much bigger show. (laughs) And, you know, this is a show that should cost four or five times what the budget we had to do. So uh, uh, the only way to really give it the size and scope is we had to go to Serbia. And, but on the flip side of that is that they have such amazing crews there that we'd come to know. Um, our costume designer, Ivana Chava, she she's amazing. And she's, you know, she's Serbian. She lives in Serbia. And she came up with this, that incredible spacesuit, which, you know, I think it's so hard to come up with an original looking spacesuit today. You know, we've seen so many of these movies. But even that helmet, having the oxygen be part of the helmet, I've never seen that before. Getting to have this remarkable crew that we'd worked with, that we knew, and be able to do it within the budget we had, uh, it could only happen in Serbia. R.I.P. Harris and R.I.P. Jasper. Let's talk to the actors who played these characters before we lose them to another show. Who dares disturb my slumber? Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, so uh, my name is Dominic Cicek and I'll be portraying the role of Harris Beckner in the arc. Ooh, uh, today was uh, a big one. Uh, basically, uh, this was the very uh, heartbreaking, I'm hoping it's gonna be heartbreaking, uh, scene of uh, my death. So uh, here I am, dead man uh, talking or walking, I'm sitting, it's okay. I mean, when I got the script, I immediately sort of went into the basic sort of um, actor's prep, which is you just wanna try and understand the, the given circumstance. So this is space, this is the future. I read some scientific journals. I mean, I enjoy uh, space uh, exploration as it is already, so I was really excited. I mean, as a kid, you know, you want to be an astronaut. You've been playing uh, an astronaut, so I had that uh, preparation for over 20 years, but uh, now uh, I, I really uh, just dwelled into the, into the work that was required for this script. I know it's, it's set in space and it's in the future, but that's just a, should we say, a filter of what's going on with everyday uh, human to human relations and uh, you have love you have deceit you have lies you have uh, lots of action a lot of action lots of stress anxiety there's lots of um, scenes where you just don't know how it's gonna end up so I think uh, you're in for a treat my name is Chris Leesk and I play Jasper Date. I think what's so exciting about it is for me, working with Dean has been incredible because I grew up watching his stuff, Independence Day and Stargate, Godzilla, amazing. So that was really exciting getting to work with him um, because his, his mind and how his understanding of the sci-fi world and that genre is just incredible and it's inspiring to watch. There is no one better in this industry at writing sci-fi. And I have never on a set felt safer in someone's hands. Coming in day one, all in the same boat, kind of working out what the language is of the piece and what we want from it has been so exciting. And also more importantly, like 13 year old Chris is high-fiving me right now because I'm playing a spaceman. And that's incredible. I read in the script, it said smarmy. And I was a bit like smarmy. It's quite hard to play. So I kind of did some research, ended up watching Harry Potter, (laughs) film six, and there is the young Voldemort, the teenage Voldemort, and he is so smarmy in that. And that performance was amazing. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna play it like Voldemort. Fetching canisters is below my pay grade. Go on, lad. It is obviously a bit different, but I think I prepared by, first of all, learning your lines, turns out it's the most important thing. Um, And I think, 
kind of being in the world and on set with everyone. It's quite, like just looking at this now, it's quite easy to feel involved. There's not much imagination happening because the people who have created the set are phenomenal. So you kind of feel part of the world and you can kind of find your character a lot easier because it's kind of all here for you, you know? I think the best part of the shooting was even though it was very hard because we had helmets and we were all getting very sweaty and I wouldn't necessarily I, I say I look my best <laughs> when I was, while I've been filming this um, but I think coming on realising and doing my reveal of I'm not who I say I am was really exciting but I did have Rich Fleishman screaming in my face in a Scottish accent which was terrifying. Where is the real guy? I, I don't know. I, I, you know. I took his place on the ship. I impersonated him. Stop! I should kill you right now. And I will add that he's a very lovely man, but he is terrifying as that part. So that was quite exciting. Once again, didn't have to do much acting. I was just scared of him. <laughs> putting blood on my costume because I'm dead. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm dead in this scene. I'm not sure. No, I've had a horrible So today we are doing my death scene, which is exciting. Sad, um, but exciting. Then you lean in, pull it open, and go right in. The plot itself is very exciting, and it's a roller coaster and you're going to go on a journey with them. But at the same time, it's not just about the plot, it's about investing in the characters, that everyone is going to have their favorite and everyone is going to feel sad by their favorite and what happens to their favorite, but also is gonna feel so much joy when this amazing thing happens to the, their favorite. So everyone's, it's a bit like friends. Everyone's gonna have their favorite and everyone's gonna be following their journey. The cast is spilling secrets. Check this out. Okay, Reese, Richie. Oh, straight in. We're starting, we're starting with you. Okay. Um, when we spoke before the season aired, you told me that you were most excited for everyone to see the EVAs. We get to see the first EVA happen in the first episode. Yeah. How was this shot? What is this like? You know, it was a real discovery process for all of us. We had to kind of, you know, um, figure out how we because it, it had to marry the actors with the situation and it, it wasn't simple I mean we had the helmets on as well um, so yeah it was it was a, at first a kind of a fun experiment for us all um, you'd be actually quite surprised if you saw about the behind the scenes on how we there's a lot of different EVAs. techniques like so some of them are obviously what you imagine to be CGI and all those those things and there's other stuff which is way more rudimentary which is arguably like even more effective so we had days where we were just doing some really bizarre contortions on like seesaw green screen seesaw standing on apple boxes yeah on one leg doing all that stuff yeah um, you'd never know I, I feel bad actually telling you about it yeah don't I, ruin the magic we don't want to ruin the magic <laughs> don't ruin the magic but yeah and then you have the, C the, com the composite CGI shots as well which makes in yeah th we ruined the magic go back to the seesaw thing yeah so basically I mean like in layman's terms Imagine a seesaw in a, a kid's playground, mm -hmm. if that was all green screen. And then one of us is like laid. On, it's a green piece on, of metal on wheels. Yeah. Basically. Uh, he's <laughs> laid on the other end, kind of straining, yeah. you know, holding your body weight up like this. You Then you're flying, right? Yeah. And then there's some guy at the back doing this. You up know. and down, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just ruined the whole magic. Yeah. Thing. What I mean is, what I mean is, mean is we had well. three days on location in space. Yeah. We, we, we went to space. <laughs> Um, that's a that's amazing. That sounds incredibly challenging. Yeah. Physically, but also again, like your face has to match the scene, and you have dialogue. Completely, and because we had to shoot individually, so we couldn't shoot it as a group. Really, it's really difficult to do to, to for eye lines and things. So all of your eye lines are are fake too. So it's you know it's a tricky. So you weren't seesawing next to each other. No, no, no. we had to do it individually, and so. I'd be like behind the monitor feeding lines for you or yeah. vice versa. And then he'd be coming back and I'm like, dude, dude, what's that? I'm like, well, they'll be like, don't do the thing with the thing. All right, yeah. okay, cool, cool. Yeah, we were looking out for so each we other. We were just trying to figure, it was real figuring out process. But for, yeah. for everyone, you know, like that was the whole, to try and make it 
to be as good as possible. But the the only good thing that that it lent itself so naturally to the intensity of the whole the straight because it just was very uncomfortable. Like you're in the suit, you're in the helmet. It's very hot. You got lights, and then you're holding your body weight in a very unnatural position. It kind of all lent itself quite well yeah. to the the craziness of being under those forces in space or lack of forces. You know. This is mind blowing. We're just peeling back the curtain. For I you. love it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the helmets then because, you know, we have so much in these helmets and but there's lights inside. Yeah, so for our DOP, Igor Shunto is an amazing DOP. He, he kind of thought about all of this in advance because he knew that the way, as soon as you put a helmet on, it covers a lot of the periphery of your face. It puts you in shadow or there's weird reflections going on. So we needed more light inside the mask than was outside the mask to highlight our faces. Otherwise, you just couldn't see. And it looks cool. And it looks which cool. is another plus. Yeah, and there are group <laughs> shots where there's a bunch of us with helmets on and you can't tell which ones we are because everybody's just got helmets on. So we had to light us in a different yeah. way to everyone else. And um, and then sound, we couldn't he- really hear each other. So we're doing a really intense scene. We've run the lines, you know, in the park in Belgrade. And we get to set and it's like... <laughs> that first day, so it was our fer- my very first day, you guys started a day before me because you were doing a big, the very first scene of the whole show. But my very first day on set, was uh, and obviously that's a nerve wracking time, right? So we had these big scenes, and I think Christy and I were doing the scenes where, in the very first episode, where um, Jasper Dades Malcolm is Perry. coming, Malcolm Perry, they're come, he's coming in, and he doesn't know how to fix the computer, and it's all that stuff, and we're screaming, and it's high energy, and it's all this, and Christy and I obviously would run it and run it and run it because it's the first day of filming in the bridge, and it's our first scenes together. Like, this is great, and then they're like, cool, we're gonna block it through. Great, it's all going great. Helmets go on. <laughs> and we're like whoa whoa yeah. we can't hear anything that's happening and so in the end we had to play the whole scenes just guessing <laughs> waiting for the like we were underwater just yeah. waiting for the other person to finish and knowing the scenes well enough to be like this is what she said and uh yeah it was just a great and that was what this job did it constantly threw up curveballs that you weren't expecting and and it was learning to manage those and 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 figure out on the fly and that's why we were so lucky because we had a production team and a crew who were all willing to roll with the punches we had a cast who were exactly the same mm-hmm. and uh that's why we managed to get through it unscathed but yeah it was definitely uh and the mic pack is in the helmet too so that so would heat up. red hot so yeah. your, your head would get red hot um and if, if you had a feedback loop where you a monitor in your ear and the mic in the helmet too that you get feedback so it's like it's a complicated thing to do effectively yeah. These are the things no one ever thinks about when they're watching the show, you know. This is the most stressful thing I've ever heard. Oh, we're this- just getting started. <laughs> Episode one, I am stressed out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was good. They were stressed out. <laughs> they were like, stressed out. Yeah, it was funny. We got to... So we're navigating all that. The mic pack's getting red hot. It's the first day. You got the nerves, the lights. We can't hear anything. Woo! All that stuff's going on. And we got to the end of this really intense scene and it's close up on Christy and I and we're like, we're right, over. where is he? Like, get in there, all this stuff. And we're just holding the end thing and the glass just fell out of my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and you just go, yeah, I don't know, we're going to go again. So um, it was a real welcome to to the, the <laughs> craziness that was yeah. the arc. There's so many questions this episode, so y'all went to co-show winner Jonathan Glasner for the answers. I am sitting down with showrunner, executive producer, and all-around great guy, Jonathan Glasner. Hello. Hello. Let's jump into this first episode. This show is an original idea. It is an original concept. Um, What is the process of starting a a show from scratch, essentially? Because it's not based on an existing IP. Well, Dean originally came up with it, Dean Devlin. And uh, then uh, before we started shooting, I got to have some input. And we just kind of talked about each character and thought out forward on the characters. Why Why did this person do this? Why did this person do that in the pilot? And how do we feed that? And and uh, with backstory. And, and then that gives, that gives you, in this case, gave us a ton of front story. And there we went with it. So you start with the characters and not the, like, high concept of the ship. That's my that's my writing style. Everybody does it differently. I mean, we knew we had to have crises happen, but the crises in my mind are only a uh, uh, an arena to set the character stuff in. You know, they're not 
if all we were doing was watching people figure out a way to get oxygen without any without knowing them or caring about them or any character stories yeah, it would be it would get old fast i think so but when you have these people doing it who you've come to love and you understand all the weight all the baggage they're claim they're carrying with them when they uh when they're doing these things then it's more interesting i think uh, yeah, yeah that's interesting yeah um, did you have a character that you were like most excited to start writing? You were like, this one's going to be super fun. I would say Alicia and and Cat. Okay, Cat is comic relief most of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, she she becomes a lot heavier later in the show, but she's comic relief, and and so that's always fun to write because you know it's not so depressing. <laughs> and Alicia is also pretty comic relief. Yeah, yeah, her yeah. too. Yeah, same reason. <laughs> but she also, I feel like. I mean, I guess writers got to love the character that talks the most, right? Not necessarily, because that's, <laughs> sometimes that stuff's hard to write, because you you got to write the diary at the mouth and actually have it saying something and not just <laughs> random, you know, stuff. And so when and if you if you go back and look at most of what she's saying when she's running off at the mouth, she's actually giving you a lot of information that's important for the story. Right. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so each of the characters have like a specific skill set that they are brought on the ship for. How did you decide what skill sets are needed on this ship? Um well, I mean it, it's just logic. We thought about we thought about what would um what would you need to what would they need to survive? What you know, if you don't have somebody who can fly, for example, that, that's an example also of uh what we adjusted from the pilot. Um, Dean had Bryce as just a navigator. And I said, well, we don't have anybody who can fly the ship. Then. <laughs> and just sitting at a console saying, okay, that's planet XYZ, and if we go this way, you know, that's not a lot for him to do. So I said, what if he's also a really talented pilot? And that's how he ended up being that way. Obviously, you need a doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, you need uh, somebody in charge of security, somebody to be the cop on board, um, because there's always going to be disagreements and fights and uh, especially in a pressure cooker like this um, you need somebody who's got a science mind we have two of those um, and we were very careful to split what their knowledge base is but uh, Alicia and um, Angus have you know are just without them we wouldn't solve anything I think probably um, and when you need the engineer you need the Scotty who can fix things <laughs> and so so there she is. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, as you say, we have two geniuses, two resident geniuses on our ship. Um, this show has a lot of science in it. Did you have to do a lot of research? Do you have NASA experts on your team? I'm a science geek. For fun, I read science magazines. So I I, I sort of knew enough to make it make sense, and then I'd go do research to fill in the blanks. And of course, you know, when you're doing a dramatic show, you can't stick to the science completely, or it would be um, very boring. Um, I mean, for example, and boring and also unproducible. I mean, for example, our anti-gravity thing, we completely made up because (laughs) they'd be floating the entire show, and who can do that? Um, (laughs) And... uh, the but like the engine system is an actual engine system that NASA is about to test for real. I think in a year, but wherever possible, whenever we could, we we actually followed science as closely as we could. Yeah, so. uh, when we spoke to the costuming department, we learned all about the suits and how That's they work. Based on a real suit from MIT that yeah. uh, compresses you to to hold everything in, hold you together, <laughs> and it's not a big, heavy, bulky like today's spacesuits. Right. Um, is there anything that you found that you were like, ooh, this is going to be so good, and I'll just hold on to this nugget for season two? There are a few things I found that I thought might be fun. Okay. Might be fun to play with. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other thing that we have happened that's that's very frustrating is we'll write a script, we'll shoot the, sc- the script, and then, like, the web telescope will see something new that completely screws up what we did. <laughs> and at that point, we got to let it go. You know, um, for example... Um, the planet we're going to um, probably won't sustain life in real life. Um, and that's just the web has been able to see things better, and they've done more research, and they've found out more stuff about it. And it's also found closer planets. 
We oh. say that's the closest planet, but now <laughs> since then it's found closer ones. So, you know, science moves fast. Right. Especially today. Well, if only somebody could get a word to the ship so they can turn around and go back. Exactly. <laughs> turn around. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about this first episode. We start off with a bang. Mm. Um, why start a show with such a destructive force? Because that's the, that's the inciting incident of our show. That's what starts everything happening. Um, without it, we'd just have a show of a bunch of people on a ship going to another planet. Um, but the 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 um, ship, you know, getting hit by something, is what uh, kills all of the the smart people. <laughs> you know, the the commanders, the the top scientists, and it's left all of their apprentice type people, who were supposed to be trained up on the on the mission as they got older and the other people started passing away. They have to step up soon, early, and they're not really qualified to. Uh, let's talk about fake Jasper and this cliffhanger. Did you know from the get that you were going to have um, stowaways? And should we assume that there are more stowaways? Uh, never assume anything. Either okay. way. Um, there may be. There may not be. Um, Jasper, um, you know, I wish we didn't kill him because I love the actor so much. But uh, he starts a about uh, half of our first storyline, so <laughs> he's valuable. He was a valuable character. Thank you so much for joining us here at After the Arc, the official after show for The Arc. If you want to keep the conversation going, give us a follow on Instagram at After the Arc. Until next time, I'm Yel Teagle. I'm Adrian Snow. And we'll see you next week.